An estimated 300,000 alcoholics live in the state of Texas. The cost of alcoholism to industry is better than $100 million a year. The Schick Hospital, the first privately financed alcohol treatment center in this part of Texas, Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes spoke to the dedicatory crowd this morning about progress in the treatment of alcoholism. Once it was admitted that the physiological and psychological problems were the cause of alcoholism, it became clear that these problems were the proper target in the fight against dependence on alcohol. The goal of the Schick Hospital, the first privately financed hospital of its type in this part of Texas, is to arrest the disease of alcoholism by breaking the physiological and psychological cycle of addiction. The programs used here will be the product of the most current research in this field. It's hoped that the work completed here will offer hope and a new life for many hundreds of our citizens who are plagued by the most complicated disease. Some of the treatments at the Schick Hospital are radical, others are tested and proven, but it's one step in the march against alcoholism. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. With the election of a uh, communist president for the first time by popular ballot in Latin America, do you foresee a spread of the principles of communism across Latin America? I don't think so, really, I don't. First of all, I'm not sure that he's communist to start with, because communism is a word that people use very loosely. As a matter of fact, I was going to be communist. They said they'll leave me in Mexico because I was communist. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I haven't even solved my own problems to be digging into everybody else's problems. And I, I, I'd rather not even make a comment on this, but really, I think he's a, he's a man who won by elections. I don't know whether he saw them or not, but I mean, he, he really won by elections. I think that's one of the principles in it. I mean, Do you think Fidel Castro's principles are going to apply generally across Latin America if the spread continues at its present rate? Now, this bird I don't like, definitely. I don't like no Fidel Castro. There you are. You're really talking about communism. Uh, this bird, really, I can tell you, I don't like him. Well, I think the chances of passage are very good. It was passed for Harris County about six years ago. It was passed for Tarrant County four years ago, Tarrant County and El Paso County. And I believe that the metropolitan areas will outvote the rural areas and will pass it. It's simply an attempt to, within our system, to modernize county government. There isn't a thing that can be done unless the voters themselves approve it. It takes, uh, requires enabling legislation and then we have to go to the people with a vote by the people before any of these changes can actually take place. This is kind of coming in by stages. In 1966, they voted on Amendment 13 in Harris County. In 1968, they voted on Amendment 11 that involved El Paso and Tarrant County for this same type of government. I can't see anything out of it, only now they're voting for every county in the state of Texas to have this form of government, which in my opinion is a metro form of government. Well, Mr. Stewart, doesn't, doesn't this indeed give the option to the people, though? Yes, they, each county would vote on it, and, and the 
point I'm getting to, the three counties that where it's passed, and neither county has asked the people to vote on it. They haven't moved in that direction. And it would tend to be a county manager form of government with the people in the county losing out on saying who their tax assessor, their county clerk, their sheriff, or the district attorney would be. It would be appointed under this form of government. Time may come when uh, these things will change, but I, I think our policy has been wise. Among other things, you've got to realize that uh, Mao Zedong has behaved systematically since 1949 uh, on the basis of not wanting uh, any amelioration of relations with the United States. People forget what happened in 1949. This is before the Korean War. There are people in this community who could write a check for $450,000 and never miss it. Well, Mr. Rogers, didn't this thing get blown just a little bit out of proportion? Yes, it got blown out of proportion, but uh, the people who blew it out of proportion are the people in this room. That's why we're having the meeting. You this mean makes us good news. Didn't no. You feel no. we're responsible for this? People? I think. Uh, now, now, say that again. Are you saying we are responsible? I think that this is all out of proportion to what really is important. Yes, sir, but I think you were saying that we should not have reported that as a no, news No, I didn't say that. Now, I'd be the last one to say that. Then how are we responsible? I say that, I say that, but the way in which this was reported and all the stories and the television, everything that's gone on since then, has created in the minds of the public a feeling that the orchestra has told the public to go fly a kite, and the public resents it. People don't want to pay more for many things. There's a, a slowness to, to insist on more purity. There's a slowness to be willing to pay some more, and it may well be that detergents will cost more if the phosphates are not used. In them. Do you see any apathy on the part of business to, to get involved in cleaning up their own products? Yes, because cleaning up the product, if you can't get a higher price for it, will reduce profits. And most customers don't want to pay a higher price for a product produced in a cleaner plant or a cleaner product. Are we going to win this battle? I'm not as sure as I would like to be, because people tend to get tired of popular issues. Well, Jim, the problem is not so much one with our...
One of the problems is the Japanese will not open their markets to American companies the way our market is open to theirs. You cannot ship into Japan, you cannot go and produce in Japan the way the Japanese can come and do it here. Now, basically, I believe, and the Export Expansion Councils believe in free trade, but it ought to be free both ways. And I have said to the Japanese, you must realize you can't continue to go on this way. You must either buy more from us or sell us less or devalue your yen in relation to our dollar or do something. To tell all the women that when they go to buy land, the title company or the real estate people have them to sign the deed and the title and everything, but it, they don't tell them it can be sold behind their back. They don't explain that to them, and I think they should tell them to, they'll have to follow their husband around if he happens to go to a bar and get drunk, or if somebody slips him some LSD. He wouldn't know what he was doing.